Well, hello there. So we are on to another unit. This is all about energy. I'm recording these videos a little bit later in the afternoon, so there might be a lot more interruptions, dog noises, crying baby from our Boab, cars driving. It'll be a lot noisier this time, but hopefully you'll be able to still focus. So the first section is on work. Let's dive into this. The purpose is we're going to understand what energy and work are, and we're going to solve some problems involving work. Energy. This is the ability to do work. I know that definition doesn't help you, but it's the ability to do work. I'm going to explain what work is in a sec. Work and energy, these are both scalar values, and the unit for both of these are joules, capital J. So what is work? We can define this in two ways. Work is either a change in energy, so we can talk about work being a delta. Again, remember delta, that's change in. So work is change in energy. We also have that work can be the product of a force and a distance. So if you apply a force over some distance, you're doing work on that object. So here's an example. If I were to lift a 13.5 kilogram box off the ground to a height of 0.9, we can talk about how much work is done on the box. This equation is force times distance. Now, the force that we're applying is the force of gravity. It doesn't say it's at constant speed. We can assume it is because we're just dealing with what's the work done on that object. So mg times delta h. Delta h being what's the change in its height because I need to apply it over a distance moved. We have those numbers. Plug it in. Multiply them. Here is what our work is equal to. Note when an object is lifted against gravity like we did in this one. You're just picking an object up. The formula work equals force times distance becomes mg delta h. We'll explain a little bit more about this in the next section, but for now, just a little heads up that you can use this equation. And again, from this, mass is m, g is acceleration due to gravity. You know that value. We've done that a few times. Delta h is change in height. So let's say we've got a box of hyper slugs. Oh, you're going to see a lot of these slugs coming up. If we've got a box of hyper slugs that is pushed horizontally at a constant velocity across a level floor using a force of 42 newtons, we want to know how much work is done on that box. So here's a box. There's a hyper slug. It's super cute. We've got some forces acting on it. Normal force and FG, those are equal to each other. We have a force applied. We have a force of friction. We're told it's constant velocity. So these two must be equal to each other as well. Now, if we're doing the work, we need a force times a distance. Our force is the force applied. We're going to use the force applied in this case, not the net force. We're doing how much work is done on the box. So we need the force that is acted upon the box. And we're told the distance. So here is how much work is done. So again, note, we're going to use applied force, not the net force. It's very important for you to read the question as to which work is being done. Are we doing work because of friction? Then use force of friction. What's the total work? Then you use F net. If I say, what's the work done by gravity? You're going to use the force of gravity. So you'll need to read the question and see which work is it asking you for. Work done on the object based on friction, gravity, normal, whatever. Just need to read the question. Here's another one. We've got a 18 kilogram boom slug is being held at 2.1 meters above the floor for 20 seconds. How much work is done on the boom slug? Here's our boom slug. Here's the free body diagrams or the forces acting upon it. We've got a force applied holding it up. We've got FG holding it down. And in this case, we've got work is equal to force applied times distance. So in this case, because it's being held, this means that the distance is zero. Think of it as displacement almost. Again, it's force times the distance that you're applying this force. So if you're just holding something, you're not moving it. So D is zero. So your work done is zero in this case. This is a nice trick question. I like to put trick questions. You know that. So this one is probably going to show up on a test. Again, note, no distance means no work done on an object. We get a toboggan full of comp slugs being pulled 12 meters along a level surface by a rope. If the rope makes an angle with the floor of 30 degrees and the tension in the rope is 100 meters, how much work is done on the toboggan? Toboggan, just a sled. I know you've seen this before. So here's our diagram. Here's our cute comp slug. Here's some forces. So FGF normal. Notice they are not equal this time. 
Here's the applied force at 30 degrees above horizontal. And we've got friction force. So if we want to know how much work is done in the object, we're still looking at force applied. However, we only want the X component of force applied. So if we expand this out, here's our force applied. We've got an X component and we've got a Y component. The X component is the one that is causing the work, not the Y, because that's not causing the movement, it's only the X component. So here's our equation using SOHCAHTOA. It's the force applied, which is the hypotenuse, times cosine 30, since we want the adjacent side. Plug in the numbers, you're told distance, you know the force applied, you get this. So here's a note. Only use the component of the force that is in the direction of displacement. So if we're moving sideways, only use the force that is sideways. Like I said, if we move in the x direction, only use fx. If we're moving in the y direction, use the y component of the force. Another example here, now we've got a truck traveling at 70 kilometers an hour, and it's being brought to a stop while skidding, so it's just caused by friction here. We want to know the work. So if we draw a free body diagram for this, force of gravity, normal force, these are equal, it's a truck, it's not accelerating up or down. We've got friction, and that's it. It's coming to a stop, so it's slamming on the brakes, and this is it. So in order to solve for work, we need force of friction times distance. But we don't know what the force of friction is, so let's figure this out. F net is equal to force of friction, since that's the sum of all the forces. Force of friction is also equal to MA if it's also if it's equal to F net, but the problem is I don't know acceleration. So now I need to use kinematics to solve for acceleration. Notice my process with this. I said work equals force of friction times distance. I don't know friction. I used F net equation to solve for that, but I don't know acceleration. So then I use kinematics. So I'm working my way down with things that I don't know in order to solve this. I need to first convert the kilometers per hour into meters per second, like always. Plug those into the equation, solve for acceleration. Notice it's negative in this case. That means, or that's because it's slowing down. So when I'm putting it into the F net equation, I just leave it as positive, like I taught you last unit, to get what the F net is. However, when I'm plugging this back into the work equation, it has to be negative. Oh, I know this is confusing. When it's kinematics, we use the negative. When we use forces, we did not. When we're doing work now, I had to put in a negative force, and this will give me a negative work. And the reason for this is work can be negative if the force is done in the negative direction. So it's very important for you to put those negatives in there if the, the force is in the negative direction. So there you go. That is the very first section on energy. We're going to move on to some more types of energy next video. All right, so the clip for this one is from a movie called Transporter 2. Not a great movie in my opinion, but found this clip and I thought that this would be something great to talk about. There's a car chase. Take a look. See what you think is wrong. Alright, so there you go. Take a look. See what you think is incorrect in this one. Okay, so this one obviously it's with the jump. There's a lot of jumping things that movies do wrong. This is where you get lots of your incorrect physics. Yeah, so in this one, let's take a look. There's a few things that are not great in this. First of all, when they hit the barrier. Look, the car doesn't even slow down, first of all. When you hit the barrier, obviously you need to have some slowing down. You can see here yeah, that is not concrete. It looks very styrofoamy. Anyways, they are not even slowing down. And as it goes through, look at this. The car is so nice and undamaged. That's not going to happen when you're going through a concrete wall. So clearly that one's incorrect. In this one, the front of your car is going to get smushed, obviously. It's going to slow the car down. And this one looks like it just goes... Oh, let's go back here. It just flies as if it doesn't go through anything. That's a terrible CG cloud. Um, the jump itself is actually pretty good in the trajectory of it. But it goes through, it lands, again, terrible CG. 
And look at this car, it's so nice and not damaged. The, the tires are great. They don't know how this works for cars. Maybe it's superhero cars and it just survives. But there's your incorrect physics. The car should experience way more damage in this than it actually did. And hitting the concrete barrier would definitely slow it down. 